Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Matthew Rasmussen, and in this presentation, I'm going to describe higher order conditioning. Higher order conditioning is another um, component of classical conditioning. And what higher order conditioning is, is that you are first originally classically conditioned to expect something from a neutral stimulus number one. Okay? Now that slowly with time becomes a conditioned stimulus, and that conditioned stimulus will make a conditioned response. However, that conditioned stimulus then is paired with a neutral stimulus, and that neutral stimulus will become neutral stimulus, conditioned stimulus number two, which thus allows for a response to occur from it. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking additional neutral stimuli and they are having meaning. These additional neutral stimuli are going to be eliciting a response. Okay, so let me explain with an example. This example is everyone likes to get cards. Okay, I don't know anyone who doesn't like to get cards unless that card is coming from IRS. Okay, um, but everyone likes to get cards. Okay, especially when it's around your birthday time or it's around Christmas, something like that. So you get a card. Why do you like this card? Well, the reason is so what is inside of this card? What is inside of this envelope? Not necessarily the card that people like, okay, if I can ever open it. Yeah, the card is kind of cool. It's got this cool little frog on there. It could be poisonous or not. But chance, look, nobody even ruined anything in here. It doesn't even matter if anyone wrote anything. Main thing that you're looking for is this, okay? Uh, the money that is inside, okay? But you know what? This money that's inside, what can this even do for you, okay? So we'll look at this. So basically what I'm saying here is that People like cards. People like to get envelopes because of what's inside of it. Okay, so this would be a condition stimulus number two. This is also a condition stimulus. This would be condition stimulus number one. It's great to get money. Okay, however, if I just gave someone money and let's pretend that, like there was some sort of dystopian society where society shut down and I gave that individual money, what could you actually do with money? Not a whole lot. I mean, you might be able to use it as uh, you can make a paper airplane out of it. You could uh, light it on fire. You might be able to stitch a bunch of these up and make a sheet or something. <laughs> but um, in and of itself, it really doesn't have any inherent value besides what you can buy with it. So this is also conditioned stimulus. Um, this would be conditioned stimulus number one. Uh, the, the card is conditioned stimulus number two. The money is conditioned stimulus number one. And then what the money can actually buy, that would be essentially the unconditioned stimulus, okay? And this unconditioned response is this joy that we get from receiving these things. So let's explain that here on my trusty little whiteboard. So we have seven terms here, I believe. Two, four, six, seven. We have two neutral stimuli, okay? First neutral stimulus, neutral stimulus number one, that's going to be the money. Okay, that's the money. Neutral stimulus number two, that's gonna be the card. You can put it as the card or the envelope. Really, for this demonstration, they're about the same thing. The unconditioned stimulus is actually going to be, I don't know, the food you can buy with it or the toys. Let's just say at an early age you can buy toys. That's about as unconditioned as they, as they get. Uh, you know, children get very happy when they see new objects. Then conditioned response, if I was to give a little toy uh, to a child, they'd be extremely happy. Now we got the conditioned stimuli. All right, conditioned stimulus one, conditioned stimulus two, that matches up exactly, okay? So we have the money, and then we have the card. Finally, we have the conditioned response. And again, in this situation, conditioned response is gonna be about the same. It's gonna be happiness that we receive from the money, as well as the card. Okay? So here they are. Now again, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this progression. Now seeing that it's higher order conditioning, there's going to be a couple of extra steps. Uh, there's going to be a couple extra during conditioning phases. So let me erase this and then when I'll explain. Okay, so what we have is uh, we have the before phase. 
and we have to know that the neutral stimulus number one was the money. So, neutral stimulus, when you're young, neutral stimulus brings nothing. Money brings nothing, okay? Money isn't going to make a little kid happy. It's like, it, it, it's, it's not like getting anything. However, you give that child a toy, an unconditioned stimulus, a toy, it's automatically going to elicit happiness in that child. Don't get them socks. That doesn't work the same way. Toy equals happiness. Now you have the during phase. Now the key of the during phase is again, you got the NS, followed by the US, and that elicits the UR, as we all are aware. So the money, followed closely by the receiving of a toy, which you do when you're at the store. So you pay, you you know, you get the money and you, you give it to someone, somehow there's money there. You get a toy, and then that elicits happiness in the individual. Okay. You pair that multiple times, individual starts to realize that the that the money. Condition stimulus one, I have a one there, brings on the condition response. Okay? Now we have this is the after phase. So we have conditioning has occurred. Now the key is though is that this money just doesn't come out of the blue. This money comes in respect to the providing of a card or an envelope. So now what you have is you have this other neutral stimulus. Neutral stimulus two, followed by. So we're just doing the. Um, we're just going to jump into the uh, the during phase here. So neutral stimulus two, followed by, condition stimulus one, okay. Elicits. The unconditioned. Sorry, the conditioned, response. Oops, sorry about that. You got the conditioned response, and that is again paired a few extra times, all resulting in probably the buying of a toy. But nonetheless, you still have the money there, so that essentially is working as an unconditioned stimulus. Now, we're going to have an additional after phase, and that additional after phase, the neutral stimulus number two, will become a conditioned stimulus number two. And that conditioned stimulus number two will start to automatically elicit a conditioned response. So that card, that card in and of itself, or that envelope, however you want to view it, will start to make an individual happy. Okay? So that is higher order conditioning. Now, all of this can be shot away, right? The way that it could be shot away is if I give an individual a card. Here's the card. Great! Happy birthday. You open that card. Ooh. There's no money in there. Try this 10, 15 times, maybe even a few times with your niece or your your nephew. Um, this actually is what starts to occur when you get older. You don't get the green backs in the cards. And then therefore, that card will, I guess, kind of lose some meaning. Now, I don't say that in, in its entirety because, you know, people will write nice things in there and it's still the, uh, uh, you know, it's like an intrinsic um, value that, you, that, uh, that an individual has with a card. You know, it has some sort of meaning. But again, the money is not in there. So, so for some individuals, it starts to lose meaning. It starts to not be as special. It starts to be kind of boring. Okay? So if you want to give someone a card and you want them to stay happy,